Okay, brand new Surface Pro 3 touchscreen computer. So we'll see how she goes for doing this example. This example deals with capillary effects. So water being drawn up a small tube by surface tension. And the problem reads, water at 40 degrees C is observed to wet clean glass such that the contact angle is about zero degrees C here. And here's the contact angle here. The question is, how high will the water be drawn up a round glass tube with diameter 0.5 millimeters by the effects of surface tension? So we're given the, the full diameter here, D. Now the way you do this problem is you draw a free body diagram for the column of water here. And the upward surface tension on the periphery of the water column has to balance the weight of the water uh, of height, unknown height h. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram. So around the periphery, around the edge of the water column where it connects or where it uh, joins the glass, we have a surface tension F. And that's equal to the uh, upsilon, the surface tension. And surface tension is a force per unit length. So it's a force per, per uh, distance. And the distance here is the the circumference all the way around this uh, water column. And that's going to be, of course, pi d. And then it acts, in general, at some angle, theta. Uh, and you're told here the contact angle is 0. But we'll do it in general terms first. So this column, and I haven't drawn it very uniform, but it's supposed to be of uniform diameter here. It's drawn up some height h, such that this surface tension force balances the weight, right? which equals weight equals mg, which in this case is equal to rho times the volume of the water column times g. So the volume of the water column here is going to be pi d squared upon 4, of course that's the cross-sectional area, times h gives you the volume. So now what we do is we do uh, some of the forces, and I'm going to call it the, the vertical direction is the y direction, and that equals zero. This is a statics problem. Now, before I do this, uh, I may want to talk a little bit about pressure. You might wonder why we don't have a pressure force on the bottom of the column. And the reason is it's the surface tension that's suspending the column. The pressure on this surface is local atmosphere, right? So. And the pressure on this surface is also atmospheric pressure. So the pressure at the at the bottom of the water column here on this surface and on the upper and lower surfaces is actually uh, atmospheric pressure. So that's why we don't include uh, the hydrostatic gradient in in this problem. So now neglecting those pressure effects, which I which aren't which are zero on both surfaces. Oh, and I should also mention there's no shear stress on this. Another force you might consider is the shear stress uh, on the wall. If the fluid's not moving, there's no velocity gradient, so there's no shear stress. So the only forces we have to deal with are the upward surface tension force and the downward weight force. So upward, we have the surface tension force, which I've called F. So I want to take the vertical component. So it's going to be uh, upsilon surface tension times pi d, then cos theta to get the vertical component. Right, We're going to resolve just the vertical component. And that's got to equal the weight, which equals rho times volumes times g. So 
So now I'm just going to rewrite this. I'm going to substitute in here for the volume. So it's going to be rho pi d squared upon 4h. And then, so that's rho v, and then don't forget g here. And now we can solve for h. Now let me just scroll down here. So I'll just scroll down there so we got a bit more room. And now I'm going to solve for h, right? So if we look at this expression, that d cancels with one of the d's. The pi cancels with the pi. And we can get an expression for h. The unknown height then equals, now what do we have here? We have the 4 will come across. We have epsilon, looks like a y, but it's an epsilon. Uh, we have the cos of the contact angle over, and now what are we left with? Left with rho dg, right? Rho d, and then our gravitational acceleration. Scroll down a little bit more. Now, I recommend working in symbolic form as long as you can, right? And then at the end, substituting in the numbers, because you'll get in the most part marks that way, because I can see what you're thinking. So now you go to your textbook, and you go to the property tables. And I think these are the right ones. Table A5. And you look up water at 40 degrees C. And you get that the uh, surface tension is 0 0.06. Nine six newtons per meter, and table A one again at forty degrees C, and you get the density of water. Basically, when you're taking it not at at slightly warmer temperatures, you're accounting for thermal expansion effects. The water's a little bit less dense as you heat it up, but just slightly. So nine ninety two kilograms per cubic meter. So now we can make the substitution. H equals 4 times 0 0.0696 newtons per meter. Cos theta, now that angle, if we scroll back up here, the angle, this contact angle, is 0 degrees for water. Water makes very good. It wets the the uh, glass surface, so you can approximate it as zero. It depends on the uh, different surfaces and whether, it, in this case, you have an air-water interface on glass, and so the angle is zero. So cos of zero, which of course is going to be one, And then on the bottom, we have the density, 992 kilograms per cubic meter. And then we have uh, D, which is 0. Point, was half a millimeter, right? So 0. 0.0005 meters. And then G, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, before we uh, crunch this out, let's just check our units here. That Newton there is a kilogram meter per second squared. And so you can see kilogram goes with kilogram. And what do we have here? We have meter per second squared on the, on the top, meters per second squared on the bottom. And uh, what do we have here now? We're going to have... Uh, 1 over a meter here, so we have 1 over a meter squared, and then meters on the, so this works out to meters as we thought. So the answer works out to 0 0.0572 meters, which equals 5.72 centimeters, which is quite a substantial dif distance for uh, water to be drawn up inside a tube.
Okay, so that's the answer to this question. Now I've just added a little extra here. Let me scroll down, just a little extra point that I would add. You know, what if this problem was long parallel plates? So two, say, glass plates and water is would be drawn up between them. So let's just make a note here. So this is a, another variation on the problem. I'm not going to solve the complete problem. I'm just going to talk about how it how it changes the problem. So let's suppose we had long parallel plates. So in this case, uh, this distance here, the distance into the page, I'm going to call uh, L, right? And what we're assuming here is that W is much, much less than L. These are really narrow plates and the water be sucked up by capillary effects. So how would this change the problem? Well, it'd be done the same way. We do a free body diagram. I'll just abbreviate that free body diagram. But now we'd have a little sort of rectangle of fluid right here. It's L into the page. The uh, width between the two glass plates is W. And the unknown H here is this height here. And question is, how much can these forces, these surface tension forces, which act at angle theta, how much, how high of a column of water or of whatever fluid you're interested in can they lift? And so in this case, it's, it's again, it's these, we'd have some weight here equal to mg, and the mass is the density times the volume times g. So again, some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero. So the surface tension force, the surface tension force now is this epsilon times the uh, length, uh, the length of the line of, inter lo the contact line between the fluid and the glass. And so it's going to be, of course, uh, epsilon times L on this side and epsilon times L on that side. So in the upper direction, we're going to have two surface tension L. Now we got to take cos theta, remember, because we got to take the vertical component. Two because you have two plates, right? So right there. You got one plate on each side, and that's going to equal rho times the volume. Now, the volume of a cube is easy in this case. is going to be h times w times l, right? h times w times l uh, times the gravitational acceleration. Now, the reason we I should mention here, we haven't considered the surface tension force on these little end bits because, remember, these are very, very narrow plates. If you knew, if, for a specific uh, problem, if you knew the length, you could add that term in if you wanted to. You could add a, a surface tension effect on the, on the ends, but we're not going to in this case. So when you do that, in this case, it, the L's cancel, and we end up with that the height that the column is drawn up is going to be 2 surface tension, or epsilon, cos theta, divided by, now what do we got left here? We're going to have uh, rho w times g. And that's for, for plates, right? But I would recommend don't memorize these things. Learn the procedure and uh, then you can do you know any geometry you want. I think one of the ones in the one of the problems in the book is you know if these two plates were slightly tapered. You know if they got a little narrower or a little wider at the top. It, it, it's basically the same thing. You balance the the weight of the column of fluid that could be drawn up against the uh, surface tension, and the surface tension occurs on that contact line uh, between the glass and the fluid. Okay, that ends this example.